Hello guys, welcome along to another video here on the channel. My name is Ash, aka Brahma18. If you're new here, welcome along. What we do on this channel is, basically I'm seen as a tactics guy, really, for the likes of FIFA and other football games as well. Uh, we do a lot of videos where I do recreate real tactics in-game, replicate them and show you how it's done. Um, and in this video today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue a series that I really started a couple of months ago. In that video, and you can check it, I'll leave a card hopefully somewhere in the video, um, I did a video on how to recreate a successful possession-based system. And it went down really well. So I thought in this video today, what we'd do is I'll talk about how to make a successful counter-attacking system. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk you through the tactics and what sort of tactics you can look at in order to create a successful system. I'll talk about what formations are the best ones to use as well. There are some that are more suited to it than others. And we'll also talk about player instructions and what you can do to help that counter-attacking system. And finally, I'll also give you some quick tips on actually playing in the system as well um, and how you can sort of make it more effective. So you'll see some gameplay. Um, I did choose Liverpool in the end and we'll talk about very shortly why we went for Liverpool. Obviously known as a very, well, dangerous counter-attacking team with that front three, etc. But they're also known for their pressing, and I want to talk about how you can still have a good pressing tactic and mix that with counter-attacking systems. Just a quick note before we do get into it. One, if you haven't already, do go and check out my Patreon. If you go on there, you'll find all sorts of great perks and rewards, including access to my custom FIFA 22 tactics package, where I give full deep dives, breakdowns, ratings and rankings on all of the real tactics that I do cover in the game. Very, very handy. We'll also have the likes of a player scouting board, which does come out very soon. I am a fully qualified football scout, level two certified. Um, so you can get a bit of value there. Also have behind the scenes videos, Discord server access, uh, exclusive tactics videos, a whole range of stuff coming. So do go and check that out. On that note, let's get into the system. So then first things first, let's talk about tactics. Now, we'll start off defensively, and what I want to talk about here is how basically anything other than constant pressure is actually well suited to a counter-attacking system. Now, that might confuse some people, because you think, well, if you're pressing, how can you really counter-attack effectively? Well, let's look at this. In this Liverpool system, I actually went with press after possession loss. And what it does, if you have a look at the uh, description, you'll see that it says, that they'll press for approximately seven seconds after losing the ball. After they've done that, if they don't regain the ball, is they'll then drop off and bed back in. Because what the most effective counter-attacking systems do is obviously they're dropping back, they're bedding back in, and then they'll hit teams. They'll force teams to commit and leave spaces, and then they hit teams on the counter. And that's what they do. And that's why Liverpool do it so well. Because what they'll do is they'll counter-press rather than have that sort of constant you know, extreme pressing system that the likes of a Bielsa or a Pochettino might do, etc. And then obviously they have that high line for that. But then what they'll do is sometimes they'll drop off um, and then it forces the opposition to really come out. They try and commit more and then they hit them with the likes of Salah and Mane, etc. Now you can also have drop back as well and that's another way. Really tailored to different teams. Depends on the system. Um, now, I personally like press after possession loss because it gives you a nice variety. You know, you can still play on the front foot when you need to and then hit teams on the counter as well. Gives you a nice balance, particularly in FIFA. But if you're someone who wants a bit more protection, feel free to go and drop back. Any of these will do fine other than constant pressure because then that's really not tailoring towards countering teams. You're not really inviting them onto you and then hitting them. You're trying to win the ball back just relentlessly. So anything other than constant pressure is absolutely fine. Then with the width, always narrow. As Jose would say, that is a principle of play. I talk about it in my tactics videos a lot. You want to be compact. Don't let the opposition play through. You force them to play out wide. And then with depth, anything that's outside of a high line is fine. So in this case, I actually went with 50, and it's a perfect mid-block. Now, obviously, in real life, Liverpool, in this instance, do play with a higher line generally. They like to play offside quite a lot. But in FIFA, you've got to be a bit more pragmatic because obviously it's easy for the opposition to exploit them runs in behind. So I prefer just dropping off slightly and making it more of a mid block. So we went for a perfect 50. Again, you can go for anything lower as well. That's absolutely fine. 
just anything that isn't a high line, 70 onwards, that's really a no-go for a counter-attacking tactic. Anything that's 69 and below, absolutely fine. I prefer a mid-block just to make you a little bit less passive, but again, you can go for a low block if you wish. You'll have noticed that this is on slow build-up, and again, you might be, well, there might be alarm bells ringing about that, wondering how can you have a counter-attacking system when you have slow build-up. Well, the thing is with slow build-up on FIFA is that it, it's actually more about how you play rather than the system. Slow build-up means players are going to just come show for the ball, drop off a little bit, but if you've got players in the right positions, and we'll talk about formations very shortly, it can work very, very well in a counter-attacking system. The only thing you don't really want here is long ball. You don't want players really showing too long away. You want to be able to execute a counter-attacking system with shorter passes and do it as quickly as possible. So fast build-up is a good one. Slow build-up, again, will work. And that's what I went with. Balanced, I would avoid because there's not really... An identity to it you know it always changes the way you're playing and that's not really what you want i would avoid balanced at all costs really slow build up and fast build up are the two you want fast build up's gonna mean that you're gonna commit a lot of men but it will leave you exposed slow build up is gonna be more about the way you play it also encourages possession based systems well. so if you still want to play through the thirds you can do that you just got to do it at a quicker um sort of pace really and you'll notice in the gameplay that's really what i do you can still skip out the midfield when you need to but it gives you that option very very important in terms of chance creation forward runs has to be forward runs this is a style that really is quite easily exploitable on fifa forward runs is without a doubt the best one to choose for a counter-attacking system i would exclusively go for forward runs if you want to be a counter-attacking team that's it would not go for anything else direct passing balanced possession leave all of them out just go for forward runs it's something that you'll find a lot of joy in your players constantly running in behind constantly movement that is one of the most important things for a counter-attacking team if not well, it is the most important thing, R running, movement, that is just absolutely pivotal. So you've got to get as much of that as possible. You'll also do it on the player instructions as well, and we'll talk about that shortly. But forward runs, very, very important. And then with width, you actually want this quite wide. And the reason why, and we'll talk about this in the player instructions as well, is you want to try and exploit the wings. The wings is where you're going to have the most joy out of counter-attacking a team on FIFA. And the reason being is because... It's just less players out wide. Like, if you're trying to counter attack through the middle, you still can do it. You still can do it effectively. In fact, I score the first goal with Jota um, by really driving through the middle. Um, but there's less players. It's less congested. On the wings, you find more space, particularly in this case when we've got wingers like Salah and Mane, the real strengths of the team, Alexander Arnold and Robertson as well. You find more space. It's easier to get them in. You'll find that the majority of my play in that game above was really coming from the wings and the majority of my chances as well. So try and get them wide. You know, balanced, anything between, you know, 30 and 70, it can still work for sure. Um, but if you can do it, I would prefer to go 70 and above. I go for 70 just because, obviously, you're going to be defending quite narrowly. We've got 20 in here. Rather than going 100 and literally stretching your team out completely on 70, it makes it a little bit easier for them to bed back in just in case you do lose the ball. So I'll go for 70. It's still wide. You'll see the description changes when you go between 69 and 70. Um, but at 70, it is a wide system. Players in the box, anything free, um, well, for free players in the box and above. So anything that's on the sixth bar and above. Usually, I would go for something more. But in this case, it's Liverpool because we wanted more of that flat midfield free. Um, and only Henderson occasionally getting into the box. We went with six. But I would really say seven. 7 to 8, getting more players into the box for that counter-attacking system. You want more players bursting forward if and when you can, 6 and above, so that you've got at least 3 players getting into the box. That's absolutely ideal. Set pieces, you can really go with whatever you want to go with. So what about the formations then? You'll see that we went for a 4-3-3 three, three, and it was a holding 4-3-3 three, three with the one defensive midfielder. That's something that I want to talk about first. You have to have at least one defensive midfielder. Why is that? Because... If you are playing a counter-attacking system, unless you've won the ball back pretty instantly with a press, you're going to be bedding back in and defending, which means you need that defensive emphasis. You want at least one player, preferably two, such as a holding 4-2-3-1. 
um, to be that defensive minded player trying to screen and protect the defense if and when he can. So make sure your system has at least one defensive midfielder. And we'll talk about other formations now where that defensive midfielder will be in place. What you're looking for in a counter-attacking system in terms of formation is wingers and strikers. You want at least two wingers or if not if you've gone for something like a free back you want two strikers so for anyone who's watched my Dortmund career mode series you'll know that we had a lot of success on the counter attack playing a free back because we played a 3-4-1-2 which meant both of my strikers could run in behind as could the attack midfielder and then you get support from the wing backs as well in this case who play as right and left midfielders something else that could work with two strikers and also wingers 4-4-2 but make sure it's the holding 4-4-2 so that you've got those defensive midfielders rather than the strikers 4-3-3 again obviously very good because you've got wingers and what why it's so important to have strikers and wingers is because on the instructions you can get them running in behind and that's what you want you want penetration trying to run in behind the opposition's back line um, and that's how you're going to have that deadly counter attack what to avoid any systems without wingers that don't have two strikers and also five back systems so something like the 5-4-1 Leave that out. You don't want one striker and they're only flat sided midfielders as well. The 5 2 1 2 isn't as good because um, it's wing backs rather than something like if we have a look here, uh, if I can find it, that is the 3 4 1 2, um, which is here. They're right and left midfielders, so they will get further forward. They're more likely to try and penetrate the back line because you can set them on getting behind. So make sure you avoid five backs and you've got systems that either have at least two strikers or if not then you've got wingers to support that striker so what about player instructions then what are the specific instructions that are going to be very handy well i've already spoken about getting people penetrating the opposition's back line and their defenders by running and that is why you are going to need get in behind on all of these now with my wingers or with my front three I've got all of them on getting behind. However, if you're playing, say, for example, a 4-3-3, you don't have to have all three of them on getting behind. For example, let's say I have a, a bigger-bodied, more target man-minded striker up front. I could actually have him on target man. And the reason why this is still good is because you could play it into him and he can hold the ball up and then wait for the wingers to run in behind, support him, and then he can play them in. He gives you that focal point. So they don't all have to be on getting behind. You can have a bit of variety and a bit of variation, but make sure at least they are on getting behind. If, say, for example, and I'll switch it up now, you're playing like a 3-4-1-2, for example, and this is something that I did do in my Dortmund career mode, is we have both strikers on getting behind, but then what we do is with their support runs, we have them on drift wide. And the reason being is that, again, they're exploiting that space, and that's what you want in a counter-attacking system. You want them to create that the space to be created from the opposition committing and then you exploiting that so because you've only got one player on each side here with the wing backs you want them drifting wide as well to run into those channels as much as possible trying to exploit that space and then on getting behind they also have drift wide what other instructions do you need well the central midfielder is very very important in a 4-3-3 or even in a 4-2-3-1 make sure that you've got one of your central midfielders acting as a box-to-box -box minded player so in terms of instructions you want them get into the box of crosses and at least on balanced attack you don't have to have them on get forward all the time because you don't want them constantly committing but you do want them to join in if and when possible again more movement you don't just want it from the cent from the wide areas you want it from the central areas as well so getting that extra support always have a box-to-box -box minded midfielder in there again that's going to help you give you more movement and this time penetration from the deeper areas and the central areas as well this will help particularly if you decide to go with the target man someone who's going to hold the ball up and have the wingers running behind him you're also going to have someone in the central areas penetrating and supporting too so that he's got someone else to play off so what are the absolute best formations to use what are the ones that i would go to for a counter attacking team well one of them is the 4-3-3 depending on the personnel you have available so to liverpool very very well suited another one is the 4-2-3-1 wide this is a go-to for a lot of counter-attacking teams you've seen a, a, the jose teams really employ this over the years but what i would do is i would change the two wingers to actual wingers rather than right and left midfielders make them right and left wingers therefore they're just going to get more for further forward 
and penetrate as well that's very very important but again it gives you that good solid protection it makes you a defensively solid team gives you that sound base so the 4231 is definitely one that i would go to personally for a counter-attacking system the other one is probably the 442 holding and again because this time you get the two wingers but then you get the two strikers so it's not as bad the fact that these are right and left midfielders because of the fact you've got two strikers but you can still get these two running in behind on the sides as well so the 442 holding and the 4231 are definitely the two i would personally go to unless as stated here your personnel really lends itself to playing another system in terms of tips to play with a counter-attacking system in-game that you can utilize to make it more successful, one that we've already spoken about, I'll just allude to it here again, exploiting the wings. Make sure you are utilizing the wings as much as possible. That's where the majority of your counter-attacking play is going to come down. You will find a lot of success in those areas. Two, using give-and-go passes, one-two passes. So on Xbox, that would be L, B, and A. And on PlayStation, that would be L1 and X. So if you're using the classic controller schemes. Um, then what that's going to do is you're going to be able to pass the ball off and then run. Very important because it gets your players going. It creates a lot of movement and it allows you to control the running as well, when they're running and who you're running with. So using that sort of L, B, and A, L1 and X, give-and-go passing, very, very important. On top of that, something that you may have noticed in the gameplay above me is delaying the pass. Now, what you might notice is often I get the ball to the likes of maybe Henderson, Thiago, or Alexander-Arnold and Robertson on the wings, and I'm looking to feed that pass through to Mane and Salah. What you find is they're, they're taking a while because the defenders are staying rigid of Man City and they're not re they haven't really committed. It's taking a little bit of time for Salah and Mane to execute their run and get into a good position just delay your pass make sure you're trying to get that run in a position where they are then able to penetrate so just delay it hold on to the ball a couple of seconds wait for them to get into a position where you know they're going to beat the opposition defender the fullback and then lay it onto them and all of a sudden you will find that they will be more open they're probably going to be in on goal um, so it's very very important to try and time your passes try and hold on to the ball a little bit more give the runners time to set their run and get going. It's very, very important that you do that. Right then, on that note, just about rounds the video off. If you do have any more questions about counter-attacking tactics, please do let me know in the comment section. Get at me and I'll do my best to get back to you. I'll try and reply to, well, I do read every comment and I'll reply to most of the comments. Um, so do get at me and I will get back to you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. Whole lot of content coming. Check out the links in the description, such as the link to my Patreon, where, of course, you get access to a great range of perks and rewards, including my FIFA 22 Custom Tactics Package, as well as a link to my Twitter. Give me a follow on there. And also Amazon affiliate links uh, to all of my gear and equipment, such as my microphone, gaming PC parts, um, all these gaming consoles and stuff, all that good stuff does give the channel a little kickback, and it's a great way to support me without paying any more money. Leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and you want to see more. And on that note, we're going to round it off there. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you soon.